Let's take that journey into mystery. This week we are talking Captain America 1979 with Case Aiken from the Certain POV Network. Thank you for joining us once again, Case. Thank you so much for having me back on. I, I'm glad that I didn't talk you guys to death uh, when we did the Infinity War in-game double feature. <laughs> no, not, not at all. That was probably one of my favorite parts of of going through the MCU. That was a good time. Well, yeah, because I like that was a a wonderful conclusion to a long running franchise that they had really like taken the time to deliberately do very well. Unlike what we're talking about today, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was going to make say. that same point. <laughs> <laughs> aren't you glad we brought you back for such a good movie too i i'm actually super glad that we we did because i i realized that i have relied on um on on the spoony experiments breakdown of this movie for so long that i never actually bothered to watch the whole thing and Ooh. confirm everything that was said in it <laughs> yeah before before we get into the actual movie uh You know, Ian, we haven't actually talked about this yet, but as we've been recording this show, there has been a MCU TV series on Disney Plus that's been happening. I assume both of you are behind you. I'm sorry. (laughs) I assume both of you are caught up on WandaVision. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Holy crap. It's so good. (laughs) Um, So what, what do you what do you both thinking about that what how how do you feel so far i mean i I love it so far i I think it's been fantastic i think that uh i I think that there's something for everyone in it um maybe not always in every episode um and it's i don't know how much i want to spoil because it's just it's it's great if you haven't seen it you should probably watch it it's a lot of fun and like i'm sure there's at least one this is not a huge spoiler. There's at least one sitcom they reference that meant something to you at some point. That's fair. Can can I issue just can I just put down the blanket like spoiler warning right now so we could talk about some points or do we want to keep I think, that pretty pretty like surface I think level that's for now? fair. I think that's fair. If you're if you're well, listening to why this don't podcast, do a tight five. Okay, five minutes. Yes. Yeah. So okay. skip forward five minutes if you don't want to be listening to WandaVision uh, to WandaVision spoilers. All right. Hey Siri, set a time set a timer for five minutes. All right, there we go. <laughs> so that's your spoiler warning. I just want to point out that they are sticking very closely, but also doing a lot of interesting stuff inside and outside the House of M storyline. Oh, yes, very much so. And that I mean, that's that's honestly, that's my favorite part of the show is not just the House of M stuff, but just how many different Easter eggs and references and, and nods to different comic book stuff. Like, yeah, you we get that a lot in the, in the movies, but the TV show seems to just be uh, ramping it up. Mm-hmm. One of my favorites is um, in the Halloween episode. Um, kick ass of all people is in the background. <laughs> yeah. It's like oh, so that, that's a good nod because Quicksilver just showed up. The dude who played Quicksilver in Age of Ultron was kick ass. It's like okay, well yeah. he was yeah. kick ass is right. Yeah. Oh yeah, Age of Ultron. Yeah, it was kick ass. Mm-hmm. Wait, I, yeah. so was there someone that was actually dressed up as kick ass? I must have missed that. Yeah, he was like in the trick or treating. He's running around. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love they, that. They also explicitly at one point say "kick ass" in such a way that it's as one word, and then right. Wanda has a response of "kick ass." Can I? I, I actually want. I talk about that episode for a second because uh, that's my favorite episode so far. And I don't have great reasons other than that, um, like doing 50s, 60s, even 70s kind of uh, sitcom parodies is kind of old hat. Like I've seen that a lot at this point and they did a very good job on this show. But seeing like late 90s, early 2000s sitcoms parodied so perfectly was so new to me. Like I've never seen a show that was like, you know, it'd be funny if we were doing a parody of of scrubs right now like i mean obviously malcolm in the middle is the big one on that show but like i realized like there's a lot of like uh camera angles that are specifically like scrubs era kind of stuff and that's all like sort of in that vein of single camera early 2000s con- uh, comedies um mm-hmm. it's it's so good like I, I like obviously the opening credit like their opening credits have been mm-hmm. great every time um 
but like mockumentary is just way easier to parody, which, you know, happens in the, the following episode. But that Halloween episode, like the way, I mean, Elizabeth Olsen has been knocking it out of the park on some mm-hmm. of these performances, but like that was one where every sound beat every like every turn of her head every like camera pan every like angle was set up it was like perfect early 2000s tv and i didn't know i needed that until i was watching that episode <laughs> do either one of you think this is that we're going to be getting uh, another big bad out of this in the last two episodes mefesto you, you I, think we're going to get the mefesto i, I, I don't yeah. think it's out of the question i mean i like i in that they have a perfectly fine vehicle in the form of like, all right, well, we've introduced like this other witch character. I'm just saying this for the, like, it's Agatha Harkness. <laughs> like, yeah. we all we've were already, calling. We've, like, we've set it down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, but we've already introduced a witch character who like in theory is drawing power from something or someone. So like, it, be it Mephisto or I've said like, or maybe they keep it simple and do Dormammu so that we're not dealing with like all kinds of different devils. Like Mephisto is fairly on the nose for just the devil. <laughs> um, so they might not want to do specifically that, but it probably doesn't matter. I, like, it, who cares? One of them is going to absorb the kids and Wanda's going to be mad about it. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't see how you get out of this without having yet another big bad, like, because you're going to want some, something that has the ramifications that you're going to need to move. Wanda's story forward. Yes. Yeah, but the question is if it's is Agatha in the service of someone or is she tapping into a thing? Like, is it just like is it gonna end up in a scenario where yeah, there's a name attached to it, but it might it could have just as easily been in like an energy force or something that she was mm-hmm. drawing power mm-hmm. on or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of don't care anymore. Like, I, like I want to know what happens, but like, this isn't me being apathetic about the show, but like, I'm, I've fully committed to being there for the ride. I've really enjoyed it all. And I, like, it's just been very fun in a way that like, in, in a way that the later game of Thrones stuff was fun. Like, I'm not talking about the last season so much, but like actually confirming all the fan theories and stuff like the show has not been surprising (laughs) in any way. Like, er, like we knew about casting calls. Like we heard that Monica Rambeau was going to be in it. And it's like, Oh, there's Mm -hmm. a character who's named Geraldine, who is like the only African American character we've seen so far. It's probably Monica Rambeau, right? Like, Oh yeah. (laughs) And then sure enough, it is. This is probably how she gets her energy powers. Sure enough. It is like the fact that it, it's a show that other people are watching from the outside and it was sword. Yeah. We all saw that. We all saw it coming and then we got to it. It's there. It's Agatha all along. We all saw it coming. Like no, no one was surprised it was Agatha <laughs> right. Harkness. I'm pretty sure either they said it was Agatha Harkness at some point, or so many fans said it must be Agatha Harkness at some point that we all were just like, yeah, it probably is Agatha Harkness, right? Like, I don't, I don't, like nothing has been a surprise. Everything's just been well done. So, I'm oh gonna, yeah, I'm going to tell everybody who decided to skip forward five minutes. Um, don't listen to last like thirty seconds. Now is where you want to come back in. Um, <laughs> so just forget everything that Case just said in the last 30 seconds if you haven't seen it. In which case, where have you been? What have you been doing with yourself? <laughs> Why are you like this? I, I, I can't see anybody else there on my other monitor. I hope we're all looking at you in shame right now because you should feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I do back. feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. The, so, uh, WandaVision's a great show. Uh, I think it's safe to say we're all enjoying it and we're looking forward to the last two episodes and uh, yes. how that, that's going to affect the rest of the is it, MCU. How, is, it a ten season? is it a 10 episode season or is it a nine episode season? Well, that's part of the question. Like there is, it's supposed to be nine, but at some point someone li- was listed as being in 10 episodes of WandaVision on like IMDb or something. And now the internet is ablaze with like rumors of a mystery 10th episode. <laughs> That's right. what I've been, I've been saying too, like, because even Feige said that there was going to be three one hour episodes, like the three, the last three episodes were going to be one hour. But if the seventh episode was only what, 20, 20 28 minutes, 32 yeah. minutes, something like that. Like, where's this uh, third 10th hour episode? Yeah. I don't know. Also, I just had a thought. You're going to have to stick with me on this. I know who our last big bad is. It's going to be David Tennant, just David Tennant. 
<laughs> not not coming back as a purple man, just David no, Tennant. It's just David Tennant. He's going to come in and be like, oh, hey there. And everybody be like, what the hell? And he's going to be like, I have all the answers because, you know, I'm David Tennant. And everybody's going to be like, get out. <laughs> That's it. I mean, did you, did you, have you watched Staged? Like, I would be okay <laughs> with this if, if David Tennant just showed up. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I just, speaking of the, Speaking of the the Disney Plus shows, are are you excited for Falcon and the Winter Soldier? I have been. I've been wanting Falcon and the Winter Soldier more than I've been wanting WandaVision. And I mean, I and, think I, it, it's safe to say that because I mean, that was supposed to come out first, but it's definitely like WandaVision is a definitely different type of sh- show altogether than what we're going to get from Falcon and Winter Soldier, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, oh, sorry, like, right. I think that Falcon and the Winter Soldier were, was definitely planned to be the second show on purpose because i think it's the safe one true like it's going to be more about characters that we've seen a lot of in a setting that we're pretty familiar with directly piggybacking off of in-game sort of like setups for the characters i think that that was intentionally put there to be like yeah if you're we're we're gonna like we're gonna take a weirder swing first but if you're not into that you'll definitely come back for falcon and the winter soldier Mm -hmm. and like it's kind of in the same ballpark as like guardians and, and, uh, and winter soldier, uh, when they, when those movies first came out, although flipped, um, right. But in that scenario, the, the slot was different because like the Falcon, and the winter soldier came out in like the March slot, which was like a way riskier time to come out as opposed to the may release, which I believe was guardians. That yes. Sounds right. No like, guardians was August. No, maybe. <laughs> Checking. The first uh, Guardians, right? Was, yeah. Yeah, I think the first Guardians yep, was August, August. August 1st, 2014. So what So what came out between them? Um Winter. Because Winter Soldier was like infamously the, the March release one, like because it changed how movies could come out. And then there's always the oh it was April 4th. What <laughs> 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 Because like the first weekend of May is always like a big slot, right? So that's weird that it came out in. Wait, did you say May fourth? April 4th. Uh, April fourth is when Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier came came out. Yeah. Oh, you know what? They, they were probably competing with some other superhero movie for that May fourth or May first weekend in May. At that point in time, was that Man of, was that Man of Steel? I think so. Ooh, probably. Uh, no, uh so is... Man of Steel. Was 2013. Um, oh, okay. What was the... What was the... That was first, June. Shit. So I have no idea. <laughs> what was the well, first... you know what it was... What was the first Batflack movie? No, that was later because that came out at the same time as uh, Civil War. Yeah. And okay. I bet you... I bet you it was an X-Men movie in 2014 that came out in, in May. Oh, it might... Or it might have been Amazing Spider-Man 2. It seems so this is Days the best Future. radio, guys. Days, oh, yeah. Days of this Future is... Past came out in 2014. I'm looking. I'm double checking. Um... Oh, it, was May, it was Amazing Spider-Man 2. It was May 2nd. That that oh, came okay. Out. Yeah, because yeah, uh, Days of Future Past was May 23rd of 2014. Wow, that was quite the two months right there. <laughs> yeah, we are monsters, by the way. <laughs> yes. yes, we are. For not remembering timelines? <laughs> Yeah, no, we are we are monsters of pedantry where we were like, well, no, it had to be this thing because oh. <laughs> I was like, I think we just did our due diligence there, Case. Yeah, no, we, had to, we, 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 we couldn't stop ourselves. We couldn't be like, this is not important nor germane to the conversation. We have to look up the dates, <laughs> not even the years. We knew the years. Right, we yeah. had to look up some weekends. <laughs> Proper nerds. Right. Um, but. I'm excited for like to get back to the Falcon Falcon and Winter Soldier. I'm excited for it because with the whole thing proving to be like at least heavily referencing House of M in WandaVision, I don't feel as silly thinking that we're gonna get like armor wars in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Well, we're getting armor wars as oh, a that's, show that's, already. It is. Never mind. I forgot that yeah. that existed. No, that's fine. It's it's a ways down the line. I forgot uh, that, that existed. Then that I think that that might be our way into Armor Wars. Then for sure, because we already have so. Don Cheadle signed on for a couple episodes. Yep. 
Yeah, I think I think that I think you're right there. I think I I, I hope we're gonna get Sam Rockwell to show up as Justin Hammer again. Oh God, I would love that. That'd be so perfect. Was, <laughs> the dude you love to hate, but also he was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he, he saved Iron Man too. Um, but last thing I wanted to ask was uh the. As we're recording this, the today uh, they announced the subtitle for Spider Man Three, uh, right, or the yeah. full official title. Uh, how, how do we feel about uh, Spider Man No Way Home? Okay, I was gonna I, ask for the clarification because I've seen like eight today. <laughs> right, I mean, yeah, we've all been way to do this. Uh, yeah, like I've made this joke multiple times on Twitter ever since they announced the second movie being Far From Home because, like, you can't help it. Like, there's like. There's so many things where you want to say like homeward bound, like home on the range. <laughs> uh, my my personal favorite that I did was home period star period runner period. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not calm. Uh, actually, Frankie from from my network had a really good one, which was uh, hang on. I got to bring it up because the wording was good. Yeah, I remember. uh Ian and myself did a whole like uh, Twitter like thread of just going back and forth. Like, ho- I think Home Skillet was in one of them. Yep. <laughs> yep. In your perfect '90s rap. <laughs> I think one of them was Home Run, and we had come up with a little bit of something for it along like hiding, like amateur baseball. Or something like yes. it was. Yes, it was really bad. But these are the kind of pitches that you love to hear. Elevator did pitches you... on elevator pitches. Oh, I mean, uh, you... the, the the one was Spider Man. We have food at home. We have. Ah, <laughs> that's good. I love that. I love that. Did you all see? Did you all take take a look at that that whiteboard though? That was in the video. <clears throat> no, no, I, I didn't seen any pause it. Yet. I was like, oh, all right, and I just moved on. Like I don't. <laughs> co-host a podcast where we talk about this kind of stuff <laughs> <laughs> like, hello? yeah but i'm obsessive in that way so some of the some of the stuff that's on there is home sweet home want to go home no place like home uh home run welcome home home alone far from home oh we already did that one uh homesick homeschooling close to home stay at home uh uh can't find home so they it, they had a they had they had a lot of fun with with uh messing with people and then when we got the three fake reveals from the three stars of the movie um home slice uh, home wrecker and phone home <laughs> like so many people went with the it's official phone home is going to be the one because it's on tom holland's instagram and it was uh Jacob Batalon came on afterwards and is like, wait, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> I thought it was a pretty good joke in like them roasting Tom Holland for always leaking everything. Like that that was that was well played. Nicely done to them. Uh, it's true. But I think based on the whiteboard and like the name that we're going with, everything there, it's safe to say we're getting like fugitive Spider Man. Right. I mean, at the end of Far From Home, you, you definitely have he's got to be on the run or at least like weary of uh, going going home and, and putting Aunt May in danger. Like he, how much how much do you guys put into the the rumors of of certain stars showing up? Oh, I'm I'm all in on that. If they don't show up, I will be heartbroken. Uh, I'm not sure about which rumor we're talking about, but uh, that's mostly because the last two weeks have been like a vortex for me. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the resurfacing of Doc Ock and Electro. Oh, and those potentially um, the other spider man the, the only thing that kind of bugs me about it is that like it's so not like Into the Spider-Verse was great and did a wonderful job of setting up like a an interesting approach to like what what it means to be Spider-Man, but like multiverse stories, aren't Spider-Man stories. Like, like you can do one and it it's fine, but it's not like it shouldn't be the definitive way that we approach Spider-Man stuff. Like, like the flash. Sure. Like multiverse stories are like baked into the character. 
uh, but it's like time travel in Star Wars. Like, it's not really there. Like, right. there's no reason that you can't do a story about it, but like, it's just not like baked into it. Like, the way I see it working is if that is the way they go with it, <clears throat> like if the, if everybody does show up and we get this multiverse thing, it's going to be the movie that in the timeline takes place between WandaVision and the next Doctor Strange. Like, because I have a hunch that in the next Doctor, like, through WandaVision, through, like, from WandaVision through Doctor Strange, holes are just going to be torn in reality at some point. And things are just going to kind of pop into existence and fall out of existence. So, that's fair. Um, if this is the movie that takes place, like, in between them, I know release date wise, it doesn't support that. But if we do that timeline wise, then that would make sense to me where Peter's just like hanging out. Next thing you know, we have two other Peter Parkers that are like, hold on, you're not me. This isn't my <laughs> New York. And then they have to fight Doc Ock and Electro at the same time because that sounds awesome. Um, <laughs> and yeah, then we get the, that's perfect. The, I, I think that's the, the best way we can do that. I, I would love if we got a shot of all three live action Spider-Man sitting at a diner all <laughs> hand on their forehead and someone walks in and goes Parker. And they all turn exactly back to the future style. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. I but think that's uh, not what we're talking about today. <laughs> no, yeah, that's right. I think I, I think I've avoided the topic long enough. <laughs> As we've been doing this year, we are going through the Marvel movies that exist that are not in the MCU, the stuff that happened before the MCU happened. Uh, these are Marvel movies that were made. As of right now, we've done Marvel movies that were made as pilot movies for TV series. We did The Incredible Hulk. We did uh, Spider-Man. And now we're doing a Captain America movie. Uh I mean, Case, I, I feel like you probably have the definitive on, like, Captain America origin, uh, stuff like that. Just, like, knowing the story back and forth. Yeah, How I'm did a we pretty differ? big Cap fan. Uh, I mean, like, there's a lot of things that differ with this one in general. Yeah. Um, wild. Man, uh, before we get into how they adapted it, I do want to, like, talk about the fact that it was a TV movie. And, like, this was just a thing in the 70s. Like... Mm -hmm. Uh, on, on one of my shows, Men of Steel, we talked about a lot of Wonder Woman stuff leading up to 84. And so that actually involved a lot of pilots that were kind of sort of TV movies. And that included both the Kathy Lee Crosby uh, Wonder Woman movie, where she is a blonde haired spy. Uh, <laughs> and then also uh, the Linda Carter stuff was also like the, the pilot was a TV movie. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it just seemed to be the way they handled this stuff. Like same for the incredible Hulk, which is part of the same sort of like freight or like a slate that they were doing with Marvel stuff. Um, it's just like, it's interesting that that's how they saw the marketing approach. They'll do like a TV movie. And if it's popular, they'll make the show off of it doing the backdoor pilot style. Um, and that, that was just the way they did superheroes then. Like, I don't, I don't know why I guess it was like, Oh, we can spend the money on the movie for some of the, the uh, permanent set pieces and costumes and then, uh, then do the TV show cheaper, I guess is the logic there. I don't know. <laughs> I did, did. Yeah. I, I uh, but, um... but, but this one was not successful enough to get made into an ongoing TV show because man. All right. So let's talk about this movie because uh -huh. uh, it's technically Captain America junior. True. You're right. Because uh, they definitely uh, explained that his father <laughs> was also some type of superhero that wore a costume. <laughs> yeah, and was called Captain America. And they explicitly <laughs> called him Captain America. But as like a joke? As like a burn? Right. <laughs> they, came, they coined a nickname called Captain America. And they called him Captain him, America. <laughs> and wore it like a flag. Yeah, of course he's going to wear it like a flag. Are you dumb? <laughs> yeah so this is captain america jr he clearly already man red brown looks the part perfectly of a super soldier infused or serum infused like adonis yeah <laughs> but he is that this entire movie like there are all these shots of him in like tight clothes and like short shorts and like all of his muscles are like about to rip through the clothes <laughs> and it's like 30 minutes before he actually gets the sermon. <laughs> yeah, but 
those shorts on the beach are great shorts. And oh, I would they're wear great those. shorts. It's just like, <laughs> man, you couldn't have you couldn't have set that up as being the start of the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. they, they said that he just he just retired from the Marines. He's he he had served his time. I, I'm I trying, mean, I'm just trying. To why even up in media res? <laughs> why even why even change that part like why make him a, a marine instead of army maybe it was product of the time um yeah i imagine that like the marines you know i, I don't want to speak too much for like where where 70s culture was on like the different branches of the military i know that the marines had like a fairly good reputation during the vietnam war era which this is coming off of and like maybe it felt like a little bit more best of the best kind of stuff as opposed to just being a grunt who was uh, drafted. Mm. Okay. I think they want to show like that. He, he, it wasn't just basic training. He was like, he still was like kind of exceptional. Right. Right. But I mean, that's, that's just like one of the many changes of the origin of this, of Steve Rogers for captain America. Like yeah. this, the, the whole he's he's just he's a surfer dude and wants to go you know just i just want to hang out on the beach all day i don't need anything else and uh already in great shape and doesn't have any of the problems that that a weakling steve rogers has and uh uh you know doesn't isn't volunteering for the super soldier serum project or anything like that he's he's uh it's it's all because he gets into a car accident a car accident that is happen. It's not so much an accident as something that happens on purpose. Like they're trying to get him killed. Uh, but yeah, like there's just so many different things. Like I, I wonder how like this, this was all being developed in the, 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 the board, the room, the writer's room that this was like, you know, that captain America story, let's go ahead and just change that up. Or did they have a different story? And they're like, Hey, let's just throw Steve Rogers' name on here. That's kind yeah, of I mean, it feels, feels like very much like like the six million dollar man or like Bionic Woman kind of. Yeah, exactly. What was it? Was it? Were those shows already out at this point? I don't really know. They must have been because this is seventy nine. Yeah, are those a, are those early seventy shows? I I I've never I've never seen an episode of the six million dollar man or Bionic Woman. Uh, yeah, Six Million Dollar Man started in 74. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because that's, that's definitely what I got the vibe from, like, watching this this movie. Yeah, it's just, I mean, uh, like, for one thing, it's so 70s. Like, so the, the movie is just 100% set in the modern day, which, I mean, I'm not sure why they did it. The only thing I can guess is that this is come like based on when they would have been working on this. They like is right when they were doing the wonder woman TV show first season was set during world war, world war two. Mm. So I wonder if the way that like the more recent wonder woman movie made it world war one, because captain America, the first Avenger had just come out and done a world war two superhero story that, there was like a, a vibe of like, well, we can't just do the exact same thing. Um, mm. <laughs> I wonder if there, that's going on. Also production costs, like doing a period piece is definitely an expensive thing to do. Even if that period piece in 1979, isn't nearly as far as we'd like to think it is. It's only no. talking like a 35 year jump, <laughs> which now would be the, the mid eighties. We don't talk about that <sighs> case. We don't, we don't bring up those numbers. It hurts. That's, bizarre to me time time is strange time yeah is it real <laughs> it's a concept we made up on our own it's it's a it's a construct but at the same time it's not but like it totally is that we all just seem to agree i i could i could spiral on that for a while I'm just <laughs> yeah yeah so, i mean it, it it's so it's so of the time beyond the fact that it's just set in the 70s because like uh, like obviously you're gonna choose to set it in the modern era if you want to do a low budget superhero movie um but like the that sort of like california surfer beach bum vibe also feels like a particularly 70s kind of dream like i'm just gonna live in a van and go to like the spots where there are good waves kind of vibe like yeah that doesn't that's not an 80s power fantasy (laughs) no but like that does sound like a pretty great life oh that that sounds like a pretty great life. I'm not going to lie. 
Uh, I, I had a, I had a train of thought there. I don't remember what I was going to say at the end of that. I'm sorry. Welcome back. Mitch. I, I, what, what is it that I, I, I don't know what just happened to me. I went away and came back just, just for people to know. <laughs> Mitch, Mitch uh, died and we brought him back to life. I'm a yeah, miracle. Snapped worker. and then snapped back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. I think I missed the last part of what you were saying case. Um, just that it's like the, the, the seventies style feels appropriate for this, where it's like, he's a, or or rather this feels like it's embracing that 70s style of like, he's living in a van and just going and finding good waves, uh, really enjoying like a very relaxing lifestyle, which is, uh, very much reinforced by the score, which is so chill. Like the, like everything is like low energy and uh yeah like just chill vibes (laughs) yeah i think that that definitely plays off of like goes along with uh what you said earlier with the you know uh coming off of the vietnam war and and you know soldiers or veterans in that point uh, needing to feel that way uh but still having that do it for america feel um what what are some of the good things that you that each of you enjoyed about this movie um, that's that's a rough one. I've got a hot take, actually. Okay. Oh yeah. Hit, All hit right. Me, hit me. I like the translucent shield. Okay, that's a very hot take. That's, wow. You know, it's a spicy, you know it's a spicy I, fucking take. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on Case's side here a little bit, where like it wasn't my favorite thing, but I appreciated the boldness of it. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that it looks very bad. Like I think that from it's a trash. It, I, I think when you just like look at first, first of all, where they're like, <laughs> like look at this like deadly weapon that it can be, and it like clearly is flopping around like a frisbee when they toss it. Like yeah, it's just ter- like terrible choices there. That that's an awful, awful choice. But uh, like I will say that actual shields that people use today are clear plastic. Like the True. that they're and it, and like they're they're real and they're actually widely used. Like there, it's riot gear. It's I mean, uh, I mean, it's mostly for like police actions, but like it actually has a viable purpose and the ability to see through it is great. So if it does the job and it can be clear, that's amazing. It's the same as like the first time you saw a clear umbrella. You're like, why didn't we always do this? Because (laughs) it makes so much sense. (laughs) So that part, I think, is good. I think that the way they've painted it on is like kind of awkward. And the fact that they didn't do like a metal ring or something on the outer edge so that you could actually feel there's some stability to the whole thing. Right. Yeah. That's a different story. But it kind of makes sense. And like the way he uses it, the the classic Captain America way, which is like putting it on the front of his motorcycle when he drives. Mm -hmm. Like that makes sense. Like you can see through it, you can use it to protect yourself, but not lose visibility. Great choices. Um, <laughs> I don't mind that part as a choice. I do like, again, it's a, the shape is probably wrong for how people would really use it. And like the materials, like or the fact that they don't have more going on and that they would cover up so much of it with paint is like weird. Like, I think they should have just doubled down on it being like uh, basically a, like a retrofitted riot shield or something. Right. Um, but it, it is actually appropriate to conceive of someone using uh, yeah, in a way you, that like an like the metal shield only works if it's like an impossible metal. <laughs> yes. And and you're 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 speaking on a uh, on a uh, to me it seems like you're speaking on a practical sense of of the of the, of being a shield and in the way that you could use it but aesthetically like yeah that does I I don't know to me it's so off-putting it's, with that red stripe. Oh, all of it's terrible. All, like, <laughs> the, the character looks awful. Yeah, I, that's I, true. I, I have thoughts on the character design when we get around to the portion of the show where we roast this movie. <laughs> but I don't mind the attempts to update things to make it plausible. Like he mm-hmm. looks like evil Knievel. And so they're clearly like he, he they're trying to make the outfit look like something that you could imagine a person actually riding on a motorcycle doing. Mm-hmm. So like, sure, crazy stuntmen and whatnot that like we're popularizing like television appearances. It makes enough sense. I don't mind Captain America wearing a helmet. I actually prefer that look like the, um, like ultimates Two Captain America era outfit or like the first Avenger look like that. Right. Right. 
Why did I go to the comic when like literally every Steve Rogers movie aside or like a uh, Chris Evans, is Steve Rogers movie aside from the first Avengers movie, which is the, the worst costume that cap wears in the entire run. <laughs> like, and that's the most faithful to the comic. It just looks the worst. Yeah. yeah. Like, so like you do need to do some kind of updates to make it all kind of work. I, so th- some of those choices aren't objectively bad ideas. None of them come together. <laughs> Like, no, none of them come together. I don't know. I feel like so. This is a, a little bit of a gripe, and then I'll talk about something I did enjoy from this movie. Um, I feel like if they had thought about the helmet a little bit more, it wouldn't have looked so clunky and out of place. If they had used like a like a GI helmet, right? Like just something <laughs> that was that looked that looked ballistic in the way of like, you can wear this into combat and it's going to be fine. Or it's at least going to help you instead of like, here's a bike helmet that we spray painted an A on. Like that's, I I would have preferred that. I I would even say that that same physical helmet, because it's a motorcycle helmet Mm -hmm. could have worked if they, if they hadn't clearly been like, Oh shit, we need this on set right now. Mm -hmm. And they just painted the A in the wings real quick. (laughs) Right. Like any, any, any sort of effort, into it and if they had done some sort of like like cowl or something for him so he didn't have to wear the helmet while he's out running around so he just has this big bobblehead ass like silhouette like the the rest of that outfit was passable it's the helmet that kills me i mean it's because it's so bulky but motorcycle helmets have to be bulky like they're they're literally there to protect your cranium i i get it it's just uh, yeah, I, I think I'm 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 just it's it's so it, it looks like an eyesore to me. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I can't I can't get over it. I, I, I appreciate what both of you are saying. Uh, I just I can't get over it. All right. So the, the thing that I enjoyed, though. OK, yeah, I want to hear thing, this. The thing that I enjoyed. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how to say <laughs> this without making it sound sarcastic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I enjoyed that he only used the shield once to stop one bullet. Oh, he he never threw it or did anything of that sense, and I I kind of enjoyed that because he had just received the shield like twenty minutes pr- like prior, so it's like you could use this to stop bullets. Oh, I forgot I can use this to stop bullets. Right. <laughs> but he doesn't remember that he could throw it. All right, cool. That I can accept that. And I enjoy his ability to be able to choke people out by holding them by the collar. <laughs> I think I missed that. <laughs> uh, the scientist guy, when he goes in, he breaks into the room to get the girls back. Uh, oh. He tells the girls, like, get out of here. And then he puts the scientist into the wall, but he's holding the guy like this, like by the shirt. Yeah. yeah. And then the guy's like, uh, 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 and passes out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... It- all right. Just out of pure fear. Yeah. That's, like is, that's is exactly a, what it was. Is it, is it a fear thing? Is it, is it, was he actually like choking him with his collar? The world may never know, but I'm about it. Steve Rogers never <laughs> stop. Never stopping. All right. <laughs> uh, I think one of the things I really enjoyed, or at least by the point it happens in the movie where I was just like, all right, yes, this I'm in for that is the, the motorcycle chase of the helicopter, like, and then oh, yeah. <laughs> jumping, <laughs> jumping the, the, the motorcycle to, to like latch onto the helicopter. Like, yes, that's exactly what you would do in this, this point. And, and it works. It works for this movie. Yes. Um, a lot of the action sequences were good. Like, yeah, they, they I, were, I can appreciate that. Like the, the action sequences, though, a, like a, a TV movie were pretty good for being a TV movie. The helicopter chase was rad. Um, the way too many spins on that turn because of the oil slick. I'm about it. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a note that about that though, where like the, the stunts themselves are fine, but they don't seem to try to interweave them into the story. Like no. everything comes as if like, Oh, it's time for a set piece. And when you compare that to the modern captain America movies, and it's not really fair to do that, but like when you do almost every action scene in a captain America movie, at least feels like it's part of the flowing narrative. Like mm-hmm. think about the elevator fight. Like, that is such a tense scene up until we get into this badass action scene. And it's really important to 
like the our understanding of how Cap is positioned in the world. Like every time we get into one of those fights, it's either uh, like it feels like it has to happen, and yeah. the, like all of these action scenes seem like it's like well, it's just I, I guess it's time we we need a beat, and like <laughs> like to to make a point off of the elevator fight specifically, a lot of the like a lot of the Captain America like the the, the modern Captain America stuff those fights feel very like it's me or them. Like it's everything that cap does is like, all right, so I'm either going to die or this is going to work. And in this one, it all feels like, all right, so what would look cool here that we might be able to like break up the fighting a little bit to have him zip away on a meat hook. Like, Uh, yeah, (laughs) I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know much else that that I could really point to for this movie that I I was super impressed with. I mean, I, I like we can talk about Red Brown. Like in terms of a casting choice for Captain America, on paper he's perfect. Yeah, for and, Captain America. Like yeah, and, but like and he did a good not job. acting wise. I thought he did you, okay. Like, you think I, he did a good job? I kind of like he had a script to work with for starters. Yeah, that's where I was going. I like. You can only do so much with a non-existent <laughs> script. <laughs> that's fair. That, you, that, I mean, that's completely fair. You show up to work that day and they're like, all right, so here's the gist of the scene. Uh, it's real dramatic. Somebody may or may not die and go. <laughs> but I mean, it wouldn't have been completely out of place for me. And maybe I would have imp- in, it appreciate it more if we would have gotten a fight a bear like in Incredible Hulk or <laughs> or samurai security guards you know scene in this movie there most certainly was room to go way further over the top like this feels like the most grounded of the of the early Marvel property movies where it's like alright yeah. it's a dude the, like the most far fetched thing is the serum itself everything else it's like okay has some sort of like at least grain of plausible deniability can we talk about that serum for a second yeah or should we it's, save that for later no no go ahead they say something about it being a steroid right and that yeah that they, um and they also talk about how it works with adrenaline and i like the, it just made me think about how like that's also the thing with the incredible hulk uh, right the Bixby era, Frigno era, like that it was like, they were really into this idea of like hidden human strength that could come out at the right moment. And like, this is very like weirdly, even though it's a much later concept to try to tie Captain America and the Hulk's origins together. um, Weirdly, they're going actually very much about it in the same way in these two properties that are also different than what the original ones were. Like this one's closer because Cap always was a steroid, but like the Hulk, what the Hulk, TV show, the, the that whole pr- production changed the nature of it from being hit by a bomb to being like, <laughs> well, we're going to try to like activate the like the hidden potential of humanity by way of gamma rays, and like they tried to like have science to it, and like very clearly, just the same buzzwords were like orbiting the zeitgeist at the time that they were making these, where it's just like, oh yeah, someone sometimes someone could lift a car if they have the right circumstances. What if those circumstances were all the time or on command? Was was I mean was that when those first those stories first started like uh, it's uh, gotta be in the media? <laughs> uh, it's either gotta be like when they first started popping up, or there was like a an incident that like caused it to be in big circulation of conversation. Yeah, the the mother lifting the car off their their right. child and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, the, I know that that's a more recent thing in the especially in the Ultimate Universe, the Marvel Ultimate Universe of trying to tie all of the Marvel characters together as, as we're trying to recreate the Captain America, super soldier serum. Uh, what do you got? Oh, well, I can make myself into bigger person. And I'm giant man. Like, what do you got? Oh, I'll make myself into the Hulk. Like it's all, it's all stemming from the same thing. So it's interesting that, that it would be the same thing in 1970s of, of trying to recreate the super soldier serum. So the story about lifting a car off a kid, like that kind of thing, um, <clears throat> according to the hysterical strength entry of Wikipedia, um, says that 
it's as far like at least in the news it's as far back as like may 1962 oh yeah but i mean like in terms of it being in the zeitgeist and uh, yeah being a pop culture thing like i wouldn't be surprised if no. each one of those that pops up like reinforces and it became just a talking point for like the early seventies and thus was like on the minds of the writers yeah. when they were working on all these things yeah. and having it happen in 62. Like that's still, I think that's still within like earshot of an event kind of thing where that's like something that's going to stick in your mind and be like, Oh, that'd be kind of cool. And then eventually you're just going to do something with it. Like I, I can see the train of thought there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my audacity quit a little bit ago. What are we at for time wise? Is anybody we know? Are at 45 minutes. Okay. Um, we haven't said nothing about this. We, <laughs> I mean, we've, we've talked about the general gist of things so far for the for like the the going back over early Marvel properties. Very rarely do we give like the plot breakdown anymore. It's just kind of a so this was a thing, right? Um, I mean, what what was the plot for this movie? What I mean, it's it's all about finding something that was being left to him by by someone else that that knew his father or something like that, right? Oh yeah, it's like one hundred percent. I I watched this movie three weeks ago and I do not remember the actual yeah. plot. <laughs> <at this point. laughs> like, and my notes don't clue me in at all. I I have like, oh, this was a good moment. Oh, this was a good thing in here. And like, I'm I'm like looking at at it and the Wikipedia description. I'm like, I like. Cause it was it. Cause it's a movie where people are trying to kill him because of what he might become. And thus he becomes the thing that they're afraid of because of what their actions like. Yeah. Right. So if no one tried to murder him, nothing would have occurred. <laughs> yeah. If nobody had been like, come to the gas station alone at 10 PM, then he would have been like, all right, cool. So we're not doing tests. You're not putting that weird thing in me. Like the serum. Uh, I'm gonna go draw water and surf a lot. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He would have just been chill as fuck, and like, just like I have notes about how like he keeps going to the beach, and it's just always uh, there's just all these beautiful people in the background because he goes to a beach in California, and yep. it's just like he's so so chill and so ripped, and you just know that like he'd be like, oh, I was drawing a thing, babe, and like someone would right. come over, like, like my note is this is a cap who fucks. Oh, absolutely. Dude, 100%. He just looks like he's just like, the water inspired me. And then it's just as much as he wants as like forever. <laughs> like, yes, <Yeah. that's>, basically. <laughs> which like, man, he just like the, the super soldier serve, which by the way, like the fact that they call it flag full latent ability gain oh, again, geez. talking about like the latent shit, like the fact that it's more on the nose. Yeah. Then super soldier serum. Yeah. <laughs> is insane. <laughs> it's true. Like why? Uh, once again, to, to create something that it's already, it's already got that whole. Oorah America and super soldier serum, like named and create something called flag. Like, it's just like, we just had to go further into it. Like kind of thing for some reason. For some reason. <laughs> so, now, my my headcanon for that, I've actually thought about this a, a few times before. Um, what if Super Soldier Serum isn't the actual name of the serum? And that's what everybody's been calling it, so that's what it became. Like, somebody's I mean, like, oh, that's, sure. the, that's the doctor that's working on what, the, the, the Super Soldier Serum. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, okay. And then the next time they say super soldier serum and the doctor's like, well, actually, it's this. And they're like, shut up. Super soldier serum. Well, like COVID isn't COVID. Yeah. Like, right. That's just our shorthand description for it. Like, and yeah. there was a there was a choice. What, what, is it going to be the Rona? Is it going to be like whatever? Like, like eventually we all settled on here's the shorthand. I don't I don't I don't mean that like there couldn't possibly <laughs> be some sort of chemical name that they use. And that they then trigger with Vita rays or whatever. Like, like it's just so weird that they somehow are like, well, we have to call it flag. We have to make it even more American. Yeah. I mean, like, cause you can just see how all the areas where this movie could have been like so much tighter on it. Like if mm -hmm. he came back and he was like, he had been like treated with this, the serum and like, maybe they're like, all right, but that's just like the base treatment. There's a way to activate even more stuff. Like right now you're, like so they could at least just acknowledge the fact that he's a goddamn giant 
in yeah. like perfect human shape. Like, like not only is he in perfect shape, he's he's very tall too. Like yeah. he's towers over everyone in the scene. And like, it looks like he's going to rip through every cloth or like every article of clothing he has just with the raw muscles that he has on his body. When he goes to like get a glass of water, like, right. Because he's huge. They should have just been like, you already have some of it in you. We're going to trigger more or like, we've got the Vita rays to activate like the full on. And, th- and that's why you'll suddenly have super hearing, which is like the main power he develops after this. So that phone call you were on, I heard something in the background from across the room through a <laughs> shitty 70s telephone. <laughs> and it said something about a truck into one of the bays. Yeah. <laughs> and then everybody right, in the yeah. room goes, like an oil company. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you watched any of the other stuff that, that Red Brown's been in? Either one um, of you? No. Uh, I forget the name of it. It was a dumb werewolf movie that I actually know of, like another extra that was in it. Oh, well, <laughs> Howling I was helping, Yeah, that was it. Because uh, I was helping him with his reel. So I watched that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I've seen like, uh, so I mentioned the at the top of this, the, the Spoonie experiment, which is an like an early online, like uh, channel awesome era, like pr- YouTubers, like slice, like borderline pre YouTuber um, who did like what he used to call Rebuaries. And so every year he would like do retrospectives on Red Brown movies. Um, and this is back oh, wow. when YouTube retrospectives were like really like beat by beat breakdowns of things. So like I <laughs> I wasn't surprised about anything that happened in this movie because I saw like a very comprehensive like beat by beat breakdown uh by Noah Antweiler the who went by Spoonie back in the day still sort of but he's kind of dormant at this point. Um mm. uh, and, and so like I've seen a lot of stuff about Red Brown movies and like it's it's one of the points he makes about the Captain America movies which is really true is that Red Brown is mostly known for known for yelling at people. Like he he screams and he like carries a machine gun and he looks like angry and hot at the same time. And in this movie, he is so passive and the whole movie is so passive. And yes, that's the big flaw of this movie. So, yeah. He's, he's so very soft spoken. Just some, some titles of, uh, other red Brown, other, other works he's been in, um, <clears throat> to, to show the, the contrast as we were talking about here. Um, uncommon valor. Your hunter of the future or hunter from the future space mutiny strike commando robo war. <laughs> so, did you see the, did you see the one that he was in, in 2016, uh, surge of power, revenge of the sequel. He plays Roger Stevenson star, <laughs> obviously making fun of the fact that he was captain America. Oh or man. That's that. yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's uh I mean, I don't know, I don't know exactly what that is, but the the poster for it is a grade. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I mean, this this whole thing feels so wasted. Like my main note oh, again and again and again is like Christ the editing is slow. Like yes. we can't like not a lot happens in this movie. Like we're we're trying to struggle to remember like the basic plot because it's so slow and ponderous. Like you could have done this entire story in 30 minutes. Yeah. Which also would would be that's the way that those 70s TV shows were though, right? Like it's it's a lot of filler for our shows. Like if you remember Chips, like Chips is not a fast-paced show for a show about two guys on motorcycles. I, I mean, sort of, but again, like I have direct comparison right now with like the two Wonder Woman movies that came out right before that's, it, that's and like fair. both are better than this. Uh, I mean, okay, I, I haven't watched it, so <laughs> like, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Like Linda Carter, everyone knows is like a good series, and and the pilot's actually really great. Um, <laughs> Cloris Leachman, <laughs> by the play, by the way, plays Hippolyta in it and just uh, devours scenery. It's fantastic. Um, that's awesome. But, but the <laughs> Kathy Lee Crosby ones actually has a lot going on f- and like a lot going for it. It also is super slow, but like stuff happens in it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this movie has a couple of action beats, but like not a lot of things really happen. No. no. And, and and honestly, there's no one else actor wise that I recognize from anything else. Like at least in the, the last few we've like we've done uh, between Doctor Strange, Amazing Spider Man, or not Amazing Spider Man, but Sp- was it was it Amazing Spider Man? Is that what those movies, those shows were called, or was it just Spider Man? 
and uh, the Incredible Hulk, like I, I recognized some of the names of some of the people and some of the faces. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I, I guess it's worth it to 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 mention that this did get a sequel pilot movie, but we couldn't find it anywhere to watch. <laughs> so it's uh, <laughs> Captain soon, America right? Two, yeah, Death Too Soon. Uh, I mean, still still starring red brown but released later in 1979 like do you feel like they just record they just filmed both back to back like it was supposed to be the first four episodes of the tv series or something probably yeah that that makes sense yeah looking at the title for death too soon um i think they made a i think they made an error it should have been um, death too soon. Death too soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, hello? How, how is this not something that was brought up? How is this? How did this make it to print as T-O-O and not T-W-O? <laughs> right. No, I keep looking at it and being like, that's that's got to be a typo, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I need to know who made that decision so I can tell them to get their head out of their ass. Yeah, like it's grammatically correct, but it's not. It's not what you just, you're supposed to do. It's, <laughs> it's, supposed like, to be, it's supposed to be a big Roman numeral behind Captain America and death and soon on opposite sides. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's exactly if, how that's supposed to look. If like. you want to make it even better, I don't know the plot of death too soon, but you put a skull in a Captain America helmet with the Roman numerals superimposed like over it, or you use the nostrils of the skull to be your Roman numerals and you put <laughs> death soon on either side of it. Get at me, Hollywood. I'm ready to go. <laughs> um there were a lot of vibes in this that uh made me think of Super Sentai. Yes. When I was looking at it and part of it is that it's 70s stuff and he's on a motorcycle and man the Sentai love motorcycles especially with like the big helmets and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, but I, this is a, a great time for me to drop one of my favorite bits of trivia which is that so you guys are familiar with Supaita man, right? The Japanese yes. Spider-Man? Yes. Uh, yes. Are Arbiter you familiar hell. with that uh, what its sequel sp- series was supposed to be. No, <laughs> no, it was supposed to be a Captain America series. Wow. And it uh, at the time, um, I'm, I want to say it was Battle Fever J, but I, I can't remember. I don't have like the Sentai names are like don't make sense to me as words for the most part. So <laughs> I don't really remember them very well. Um, but so it was supposed to be a Captain America sequel. And Marvel was a producer for the first like 10 seasons of Sentai stuff. Um, And because of a whole convoluted thing, Marvel didn't want to use its property that way. Um, So they changed it from Captain America to Miss America, who was like a golden age superhero from Marvel Comics um, and made it a team. It was supposed to be a team of uh, UN themed characters. And that's ultimately what it was. But it became Miss America instead of Captain America. Um, And that was the first Super Sentai team because they had. Uh, previous teams that had uh, like quick changing spies in spandex outfits. And then there was Supida man who had a giant robot and they were like, well, what if we gave the spy team the giant robot? And then that became super Sentai. And that was the, what was supposed to be the captain America season is considered the first season of the thing that ultimately became power Rangers and has continued on with all this craziness. And it kind of makes sense when you think about it, which is that Spider-Man and cap both have powers that can be done fairly well, like fairly easily in a TV setting. Like all you need is like fake super strength, like feats and like some big jumping moments. Um, and maybe speed up the run every now and then. Like in terms of powers, much easier to do than Superman. Anyone who can fly, anyone with energy powers, like that's that's why all the Power Rangers are just like, yeah, we can flip into action and we can martial arts and then get inside a robot. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, and you can like you get some of that vibe here. Like he even has a Sentai quick change when he like gets inside the van and like explodes out. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay, I am a liar. I think the fact that his motorcycle would just like rocket bike out of the back of the van i love that like, <laughs> like yeah it's actually, a cool ass van it's it's Wait, awesome that's the thing that's good the, the, yes i want the van the van is the best <laughs> part of this whole movie um i was actually a little bit bummed out when the oil slick made him flip his van down the mountain i was like man that's his whole life that, that's his whole thing <laughs> yeah i hope the motorcycle i hope the dirt bike on the back is good um but like <laughs> The first time we see him just like out of the out of the van, I was like, there we go. I'm on board. You you caught my attention. And then he proceeded to not 
fight anyone after doing that. <laughs> and I was instantly bummed out. So that's what I was going to ask. Uh, I have no idea if they made a toy line based off of this or not mm. back in 1979. But if you were to make a toy line based off this movie, would the accessory be the van or the motorcycle or a combination of both where they did the whole uh, evil Knievel, like crank it up so that it shoots out of the van. Uh, it's it's got to be the exploding out of the van. Yeah. Kind of like, <laughs> if, if not, like what are we even doing here? And there's a, uh, <laughs> So Captain America and also the is toy you would separately. make is a shield. The shield. Well, I mean, the shield has it's a plastic come. shield. Like it's yeah, <laughs> it's easy enough. Yes, it's zero it's, effort. <laughs> like, if we're doing the if we're doing the the like crank it up and like watch the bike explode out, um, that would be a sold separate accessory for the action figure that is Captain America. Yes, Correct. the Captain America action figure you'd have to like you you would buy and then you'd put him on the the yes, uh, the motorcycle, put it inside the van, and the van would really have no function other than to be exploded out from. Yeah. Correct. There's like a spring or like there's like a crank or something to let that spring just like like actually get it out of there. Um, <laughs> and then somebody inevitably would figure out a way to put rocks in it and shoot them at their friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and now we have lawsuits way to go right. Ian. Hey, i'm sorry that i went through the evolution of that toy it's now banned at every school because some kid beat up another kid and then shot him with rocks out of his who's, who's to say we aren't speculating about a true thing that happened in 1979 <laughs> why did you get why did you get expelled uh, i put a bunch of pencils in my evil knievel uh motorcycle launcher and uh <laughs> I shot him at my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, I, Fuck, I, I wanted mean, to like this movie so much more. Than I did. <laughs> I really did too. Coming off the heels of, um, off of the incredible Hulk stuff. Uh, yeah. The incredible Hulk stuff. I've said it at this point. I think this is like the third or fourth time I've said it is honestly pretty good. If you replaced the Hulk with like any, kind of normal detective kind of dude you have a solid movie on your hands uh like, which ones did you guys watch did you watch the original pilot or just the later movies that they did we watched no, the original pilot so far and, okay yeah, the, original uh, pilot's the second like, one that... yeah the second pilot also yeah so like death death in the family death so the it, family. it's the incredible hulk and then re- the incredible hulk returns death in the family which is okay. the first four episodes of the first season uh, just both were released as movies also in theaters and not to be confused with later on down the line return of the incredible Hulk. right that's what i was wondering because like yeah. that's a different side of it but like the the original pilot for that for the incredible hulk is so good like it is. like bill bixby is such an amazing david banner and ferrigno is um so much bigger than I think we give him credit for. <laughs> <laughs> and in the first one, um, the when he finally gets to say, "You won't like me when I'm angry," just the way he delivers it, it it was it was good. It hit. Um, again, if you if you took that premise and made it not Hulk based, I still think you have a valid movie on your hands mm-hmm. or a valid story. So, like so far. Those are the top tier of what we've seen. Uh, oh yeah. Well, <laughs> like the, the problem is like for first of all, there's a reason that's the one that went to series. Uh, yes. <laughs> and and another yes. like that's probably the best Hulk movie ever made. True. I like Incredible Hulk with I Edward Norton. I like look, I I, I am it. a defender of the Ang Lee Hulk movie. Like but I That's I'm, harsh. I'm still, like I'm, I am a, a legit defender, and I like the Ed Norton one with some caveats in there. But like, I I still stand by like, and I don't think that they should remake it. Like, I think that one of the problems with the Ed Norton one was that it loved the Bixby Hulk too much. True, very but I, much. I think that that still was the best Hulk movie ever made because <laughs> like it actually deals with like oh sh- like the the most interesting thing there is that David Banner is a person who has a hard time controlling his temper and all of a sudden it has deathly consequences. And so there's actual pathos and like a real thing going on in that, like in that movie that you, you appreciate. And there's like all the, like there's cool consequences. And then there's one of the most iconic themes ever with the lonely man theme. All like yeah. all of, it's, yeah. it's amazing in a way that, that this captain America movie is not <laughs> at no, all. Not even a little bit. Um, 
if they had had a similar team work on this that worked on the the, the Hulk movies, maybe it would have been better. Yeah. Um, but also, I think maybe you just don't. I think the world would have been just as fine not having this movie. <laughs> I I I, be, I yeah I think so, but I think that the whole point is that you know they were they were trying they're trying to make it make it work. Like even uh, the IMDb trivia for this says that at Red Brown at, at Comic Con uh, said that they were going to do a Spider Man with Nicholas Hammond and uh, Lou Ferrigno, Bill Bixby, Incredible Hulk like crossover with this Captain America, but it never happened. God, can you imagine like a 1982 Avengers TV series, like a mini series or something I mean, like Roots style? <laughs> still better, still better than the Iron Fist. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, I'm curious, like if you if someone had a way to like get a version of this without the music. Or like at least either multi-tracked or so, somewhere where you could take out the score. Um, right. And recut this down from 97 minutes, which is not fucking 97 minutes of story, and get it down just to an hour uh, with like music that actually like is tense at the appropriate times and has like good energy at the appropriate times. Like you, this might be fun, but it's so fucking slow. Yes. Oh my god, I had to watch this because I rewatched it today, but I started it at normal speed. I finished <laughs> it at two times normal speed. <laughs> because it was just that kind of slow where it's like, are we kidding? I have 45 minutes left of this. Mm. <laughs> like, uh-uh. Crank that speed up. And then I was like, oh, it's moderately paced now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do have notes of being like, how much more is in this? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel that. Um, all right. Yeah. I think I think we're, we've talked about this enough. Uh, w- like I said, we were supposed to do uh, the next Captain America movie, which also came out in 1979, but we can't find it anywhere. Nope. So we're going to invite Case to come back for the 1990 Captain America movie. And I hope- am down for that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that we have better luck with watching that. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for us to like invite somebody back on the show and just have him go, nah. <laughs> I'm, I'm good no thank you <laughs> no i mean like the upside is like this is uh, b- barring captain america 2 death too soon uh, <laughs> which i ha- have no experience with like th- this is the worst like the 91 is like has a lot going for it it's it, like there's a reason it wasn't a hit but like it has a lot going for it it was uh, fun was- i accidentally <laughs> watched it uh- <laughs> I mean that one makes him East Coast or not East Coast West Coast like California kid also if I remember correctly it's been a while yeah but it doesn't matter like first of all he becomes Captain America at the very beginning of it <laughs> yeah it's true <laughs> and they do they it's way more appropriate like it, it actually beat by beat is fairly close to what you would expect a Captain America movie should be <laughs> versus this one where it's just like none of this makes sense <laughs> <sighs> so uh then case where is it that people can find you um people can find me on twitter at case Aiken. they can find stuff i do at certain uh i host a bunch of podcasts uh one about superman uh, and superman adjacent stuff called men of steel uh i host one uh that is a movie analysis podcast that both of you have been on at this point called another pass. Uh, I am also the dungeon master for scruffy nerf herders, which is our star Wars D and D game. I love that. Yes, definitely go check out all those podcasts. Uh, Ian, where can people find you? Hi, my name is Ian. You've been listening to us so far and these dulcet tones have kept you entertained at least this far. If you want, you can find me most days during the week at twitch.tv slash Ian Flux and nine times out of ten, well, seven times out of ten, we stream this on Wednesdays. <laughs> so drop a follow over there on the Twitch channel so you know when we're live. And it'll say real big, Journey into Mystery, so you know what's going on. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Instagram is just at Ian Flux, that's I-A-N-F-L-U-X, and Twitter is Ian Flux, or at Ian Flux 12, I-A-N-F-L-U-X, the numbers one, two. Hey, Mitch, where can people find you? 
You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Mitchipedia, G-E-M, G-E-M stands for Geek Elite Media. The rest of Geek Elite Media is at Geek Elite Media on Twitter, at Geek Elite Media on Instagram, and Facebook.com forward slash Geek Elite Media is our Facebook page. Check out archived episodes of this podcast and other podcasts on our network on our website, geekleetmedia.com. Check out our Patreon page. If you're a patron, like cases, yeah. you, you get exclusive material <laughs> that only our patrons get. I think I was the first patron too. <laughs> like, you are. You were. You definitely were. Because uh, you were then, asking me questions. You're like, I'm about to hit launch, and I was like, I'm about to, like subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then whatever podcatcher you use, please rate and review us to help spread the word of our network. But until next time, this is Journey into Mystery on the Geekly Media Network. Saying always remember to geek out. Geek out. Geek out.